Hello, this is uh, Andrew with another uh, tutorial. This time I'm going to try something different where I, um, I'm i actually going to use uh, Rhino and Grasshopper and kind of go over uh, around 10, 10 sort of little just tips and tricks that I've accumulated over the last like eight years using Grasshopper. It's not necessarily an advanced like um, knowledge in Grasshopper, but it's not beginner either. It sort of sits uh, sits in the middle, and it's uh, so I think it's beneficial for everyone. I've accumulated these from watching other people and just through my own um, sort of explorations. Um, and kicking it off, the first one definitely is uh, like when previewing niche show in Grasshopper to uh, other people. The ability to display the names um, is crucial, and I think this uh, app, which is called Bifocals, I think this one, it, it was developed by the architecture firm uh, NBBJ, um, and they basically just release it. And all you do is you basically drop it into the fields anywhere, and then it starts displaying names of every single component in the uh, in the field. This is quite um, helpful, and I'll be using uh, that today. I'm also going to include the links to these um, on Food for Rhino um, in the description, so you can follow and download these to your Grasshopper libraries. Um, the second one that I that I've found out is uh, Scribble and uh, Drawing. Scribble is how I made these things. For example, Scribble is super nice and. And, and this, once again, is another way of like sort of annotating your uh, grasshopper files and, and uh, sort of allowing to pass on that information to other users. That's the one thing that sort of drawback of uh, grasshopper is uh, is the flow between people. There's a lot of information gets lost, and it's not a very legible uh, thing. So having using Scribble to annotate your files, and also using this here, which is drawing, allows you to uh, really explain to other people what is happening. Anyways, so that's uh, scribble and drawing, which I think is another crucial one just for explaining. Um, this next one gets a little bit more complex. Um, as you can see, these are clearly like not in order. They're just sort of uh, nice, little, uh, nice little tidbits. Um, so what I'm doing here, here let's, uh, let's preview these guys on. So what I'm doing here, here, let's turn off the grid, show grid off. So now we just are showing the, um, with this grasshopper script, which is essentially, so it's just a sphere, and then I'm contouring, contouring up here, sphere. And what I, when, when you're sort of displaying grasshopper and you're trying to show it to, um, to other people and, and ideate through different variations, it's always complicated, sort of like, taking groups of, or clusters of um, components and then like replugging in, you know? So if you want to try what a square or what a, what a sphere will do in this instance, you're always like having to rewire and, and it gets always complicated. So what I found is these two, these two components, um, which I'll just highlight this, are a critical. So what it's called is stream gate in stream filter. And if I go here, uh, control alt, I can click on this to see where it is in the um, menus, and it's up there. So stream gate. Basically, what it does is it allows like a partition of the information downstream. So you can, so I can, so for example, I can decide this gate, and it only has two options. So right now, if this uh, option is on one, it'll go down. It'll follow this one. It'll follow it through all these components and out here, and then to this B rep, so I can continue on further down the line into the script. However, if I swap it to zero, then it's following this zero down here and also resulting in a, a different view up here, which I will um, preview and I'll just turn these guys off. So what you can see here is that it's following the zero, the um, item zero through a pipe and you're outputting a pipe B rep. However, if I just swap it to one, now, now you're getting a sort of like contoured um, geometry view up out here. And it's, so now you can just continue this on and you can use any sort of information on either one of these view reps. And another, um, and a little bit more uh, advanced portion of this is you can use, well, I, I like to use uh, this value list one. 
So here, we can substitute that for this to make it a little bit more clear. For example, here, let's delete. We only have two options. So for the first one, we'll be we'll call it um, pipe, and that's in gate zero. And then what's in gate one? It is a uh, sort of uh, uh, contour. I just call it contour. Um, so that so now I can uh, control shift plug both those into here. So now if I have it on pipe, it'll pipe it. And when you move it to contour, it'll contour it. So that's another trip. Both stream filter and stream gate can be used really nicely in our scripts. Okay, and that sort of leads us to our next one, which I'm gonna say is called hidden wires. Um, whenever you have these sort of things, this becomes a bit a bit of a mess. Um, and, and so what you can do with this is you can right click, for example, on this wire display, wire display, hidden. You can come here, wire display, hidden. And now it maintains that connection. And you can change this without having the complications of sort of all this like crazy network of uh, spaghetti noodles uh, across your screen. The next sort of going, continuing on with this vein of this little tiny uh, kind of weird script I made. Um, is using clusters can also even clean it up further. For example, a cluster is just when you um, basically create your own components of a series of other components. So for example, if I wanted to make this, uh, so I'm contouring it right now, following the stream of these components, I can right click on these and I can cluster. And now this cluster is containing all of those just for, just for, uh, Let's just cluster these guys as well. So now, so now I have a pipe cluster and a contour cluster. Now, if I right click, double click into here, I can see where where the, is the input, where there's an output, and and and, and then I can like save and close. Um, and this, and if you need to create additional inputs and outputs, it's, I think it's right here. Yeah cluster input, for example, let's like, let's say I don't want to dive into this cluster to input into the, um, the distance of the extrusion. So I'm just going to put this input in here, replace this guy and actually delete this guy. And then let's call this, or I guess, um, extrusion. Then when I go save and close, now I have extrusion here. And now I can go 0.15. So now I can take that cluster, keep it really clean, and do what I will with uh, do what I will with um, any sort of thing like that. Okay, so that's um, so that's cluster. Next one, custom preview, and this is by um, Andrew Human and his human. Um, in his uh, human plugin, which you will find on Food Runner, once again in the description. Um, and these these are just really nice components, um, which I will show you right now how to use. I'm just going to reuse this script again. So now I have this B rep coming out, and I'm going to want to uh, actually I'll just find it. It's called uh, custom preview. Um, yeah, let's just, oh, we can just use a simple one. There's a, there's a, there's a couple of them that you can use. Anyway, so you can plug in the geometry onto this, and then this is going to input a material, but it's easiest just to uh, bring in a color swatch. So now I can go to Arctic mode. I can do, oh shit, I didn't mean to do pen mode. Uh, wait a moment, give me a second. I'm working on a, uh, I'm working on a laptop that's not necessarily at its prime, let's say. Anyway, so now you can sort of even preview these geometries through Rhino. Um, and we can change this. So we can be manipulating these while actually previewing it in Rhino Arctic mode, which is pretty nice. Um, and in the other one, which I was uh, an extension of this custom preview line weights. So here, let's let's say I want to preview the edges of this geometry. Let's put it into a nice little. Uh, let's go light purple. That'll be interesting. Um, so I believe that's it. Shader. Yep. 
And then I'm going to need to deconstruct vrep to get uh, the actual um, to get the actual um, edges of this. So vrep into here, then you have edges in the center. Edges go to that geometry, preview off. And now you can see that I can see the edges of here. And let's uh, thickness, set number, let's go to one or something. Thickness, set number five. Okay, there we go, four. So now you can manipulate, and this is really great for like diagramming and whatnot in Grasshopper without ever um, without ever moving into needing like visualization in Illustrator or additional sort of programming. Okay, let's yeah, let's continue on. I'm gonna go back to um, shaded mode. Um, so that's so that's cluster custom preview, um, only preview geometry, which this is something I also use all the time. Let's say when I'm building a script, I'm just going like haywire, and you're you're gonna end up seeing something like this, um, where you're not continually previewing on, previewing off uh, your uh, your scripts. But what I really love is this feature right here, which is only draw. Uh, geometry for selected object. So I'll turn that on and then all of a sudden what you're going to be able to do is when you click on any of these uh, components, that's the thing that's only going to be uh, isolated in your preview. So I can, you know, preview the sphere, preview the contours and whatnot. It's a super handy little uh, trick just to only see what you want to see at the right time, which is <laughs> very powerful. Okay, this next one, once again, a little bit more complicated, but Oh, I guess never mind. This is super simple. I'm just gonna uh, actually I'll, uh, just construct my own over here. So let's uh, get rid of these. So I'm um, gonna. Uh, so I have this beer up, and let's say I want to mesh it. However, so I'm gonna create a mesh. Um, then I'll turn this off. But I don't want to be continually remeshing it every single time that I alter this number. I only want this as an end result. Um, so while I'm playing with all these parameters and sort of tweaking my geometry, I don't I don't need it to mesh up until until the very end. So what you can put here, um, I mean, you, yes, you can just sort of disconnect these um, and, and and then in a moment plug them in. However, there is a cleaner way of doing this. It's called a data dam. So you just connect these. So now you have, let's see, preview. You're seeing this B-Rep, and I can manipulate it and do whatever I want. And this mesh, as you can see, it's not active. But the second you push this, it passes um, passes the information through that component into this. So now, now I'm seeing that mesh. And if I go and tweak this again, you can see that that mesh is not changing until, once again, I click that, and then it'll update. That's a very like clean way of computationally like saving your computer a little bit of space. And when I'm working on uh, such a, a, a laptop, <laughs> I really need to take advantage of, uh, of that. Anyways, um, okay, this one's I already. Uh, let's turn off these guys. Um, so let's create a point. Assign one point. I already realized I have to do that again. Okay. What this, what this is, this is probably the cleanest way of using um, the graph, the graph mapper component, which control I'll show into here. It's in the pr uh, primitives. It's just called the graph mapper, graph uh, mapper right here, in which you can right click and see all different types of graph types: signs, parabolas, um, Bezier's, anything you want. What I have here on the, which I've already drawn, is a um, a nice Bezier. Anyways, what what this all this little tiny script is doing is moving uh, points in the z direction. But so I'm trying to the best way to use this. The, the problem is is that it's basically what I'm telling it is that I want 29 numbers to pass through here. This series is giving me like the intervals in here, right? So it's just one divided by 30. So so for every point 0, 03 in the x, you're going to have a step. And it's evaluating that same number on each one of these steps as it intersects with the curve. So that's where I'm getting sort of this uh, this gradient, which is quite nice. 
Um, anyways, but the cleanest way to do this is to use this 0 to 1, 0, 1 as the default which graph mapper comes. And, and you're going to construct your list of numbers within that. And now this will only give you an output of all of these between 0 and 1. And it's a very controlled list. It's very nice because you can continually change the amount of numbers coming in here, and it will always stay between 0 and 1, which is really helpful. What I do afterwards I always is I always remap these numbers to be between the numbers that you want. So for example, what's coming out through here is between 0 and 1, right? However, I actually don't want to scale only between 0 and 1. If I was to, to plug this in rather than the remap numbers, the maximum is going to be 1, minimum 0. But I actually want to, um, I want to remap those numbers between, for example, 0 and 4. I can, of course, go at any point. So between 0.5 and 8. It's now going to take those same numbers and generate them between 0.5 and 8 to get a really nice uh, gradient. And we can just casually uh, swap in and out, you know, and, uh, and really and take advantage of your <laughs> math classes that I'm sure you paid uh, good attention to. Anyways, that's the graph mapper. Super convenient little tool. Um, that's probably the best way I found out to use it. If you have any uh, additional ways, please let me know. I would love to learn even some more. I'm here, but okay. let's preview this guy off, preview off. And, the, and, and sort of the last trick I have for you uh, today is, is double backslash. Brings up the panel. I think that's a critical. Actually, I already used it probably like two or three times in this tutorial. So I highly recommend the double backslash. And there's a few more um, sort of tips like this. Like if you use the, uh, the quote mark, you can just have a panel that uh, encapsulates that just that little piece of information. It's uh, there's quite a few little of these, but by far those two are the best ones, the double backslash and the single quote and then whatever number. So then that's all for today. I'm sure I'm going to have a million more. Please uh, leave a comment if you have uh, more, uh, more ideas and uh, thanks for supporting me.